Hey girl gang, it's Dr. Joy here and you are watching Delivering Joy MDTV. Welcome to Well Woman Wednesday, where we have been talking about birth control and we are almost to the end of this series. So come on in my office girl and let's talk today about barrier methods. Yes, barrier methods like condoms, female condoms, diaphragms, cervical cups. I got it all for you today. So make sure you keep watching. All right, girl gang. So we've been talking about birth control and you know, I've been kind of working my way from the most effective down to the least effective. So today I'm talking to you about barrier methods and I'll be honest with you because you know I'm always honest. Um, when I think about barrier methods, I really think more about sexually transmitted infection protection. So like keeping you from getting sexually transmitted infections or STIs uh, versus preventing pregnancy. And that's really just because when you think about the effectiveness of these methods, it's not really nearly as good as some of the other birth controls out there. But if for whatever reason, those other birth control methods are not for you, um, whether that's for medical reasons, religious reasons, um, I don't know, I just don't like them reasons, then barrier methods might be a good form of contraception for you. So first, let's cover condoms. And I brought in some of my favorite TikTok experts because I believe that a picture is worth a thousand words and a good quick video is worth 10,000 words. So check this out. Condom mistakes you should never make, part one. The mistake, you put the condom on inside out by accident, but then you don't replace it. You may be thinking, can't we just flip the condom over and roll it down? Well, if you're really trying to practice safe sex, the answer is no. By simply flipping the condom over, you could be exposed to pre-cum, which technically means you could be exposed to the bacteria and viruses that cause STIs. Also in said pre-cum, there can be trace amounts of sperm. And while the risk is low, the research shows that there is still a risk of pregnancy when it comes to pre-cum. Our advice, just grab a new condom. It's better to be safe than sorry. When put on correctly, a condom should roll down with ease, just like this. Yes, and you don't wanna be making these mistakes. I really loved how they did this video. And here is part two. Don't wanna miss this. Kind of mistakes you should never make, part two. The mistake, there's no space left at the tip of the condom. If you forget to pinch the tip, there's a risk that semen may run down the sides of the condom and leak out before withdrawal. On the flip side, there shouldn't be too much space at the tip as the condom can fall off during sex or tear more easily if there's too much air. Like this video for more sex ed tips. Mm-hmm, so you wanna get that condom on right each and every time. And remember, even though I've been talking to you guys about all these other birth control methods, a condom is so vital because birth control does not protect against sexually transmitted infections. So no matter what birth control you choose, knowing how to put these condoms on right is absolutely unequivocally essential. So make sure that you save these videos so that you know how to do it properly. And whether you identify as male or female or they, them, theirs is important that you know how to protect yourself whether you have um, a penis or not so next let's move on to female condoms i really think this is such a neat idea it didn't ever really catch on the way that we thought it would during the hiv um, epidemic but it's definitely something that's out there and available so i want y'all to know about it because i believe that when you know better you can do better so i'm trying to give you all the tea so check out this video on female condoms. Hey everybody, I wanted to share with you the internal condom. This here is the FC2 female condom or internal condom. So let's open the package. And this is what we have. Both of the rings are flexible. This one is a little stiffer and this one is a little softer. The difference between the two rings is that, other than the flexibility, is this one is closed and this one is open. You take the closed end, squeeze it, and put it up into the vagina. I'll show you with the model. So squeeze, kind of push it up in there, 
and then it sits like that. The open end sits outside and creates a little pouch. It actually comes pre-lubricated with a really nice silicone lubricant, but you can use any additional lubricant that you want with it. Right? This seems like it's very, very um, useful. So this is great for regardless of who you are engaging in sexual acts with, you can use this female condom. There are also dental dams, which kind of remind me of saran wrap, to be honest with you. But these are things that you can use for oral sex. So, so important to know about these barrier methods, not only for prevention of pregnancy, but for prevention of sexually transmitted infections. If you didn't catch this um, playlist that I have on sexually transmitted infections, you definitely want to do that. Um, I think that, you know, t knowing your status and protecting yourself and your partners is just so important. I mean, it's the right thing to do. If you really care about somebody enough to be sharing your very, very personal private space with them, then you should be interested in their success. Set your partners up for success, boo. Okay, I get sidetracked. Y'all know I like to jump down rabbit holes sometimes. So anyway, back to pregnancy prevention. So what about diaphragms and cervical cups? So these are, again, back to your grandmother's birth control. These are very, very old, tried and true methods. Definitely useful. Um, I know a few folks who still use them. The diaphragm and cervical cups are meant to actually cover the cervix to prevent the sperm from getting up into the through the cervix and up into the uterus and out to fertilize the egg. So these are a barrier method that protect against um, fertilization of the egg. Um, the thing about these is that you really need to see your um, OBGYN care provider um, because you is they're not one size fit all. So you can't just really go buy one and place it uh, up into the vagina around the cervix uh, because everybody's cervix is not the same size. Some people have really small thin cervices. Some people have really large cervices. So in order to really offer optimum protection, um, you really need the right size for your cervix. So you need to be fitted for one of these. And it's also best if you use these with spermicides. And if you missed last week's video on spermicides, I'll link that up here in the cards too as well. But definitely um, increases the effectiveness. And the way that you place your cervical cup or your diaphragm is very similar to what we talked about with our vaginal rings. Link that one for you too. Got you girl, I got you. So um, this is where you're gonna actually pinch and place this all the way in the back of the vagina and it fits snugly against the cervix and blocks sperm from getting up into the uterus. So in terms of effectiveness, when we're thinking about effectiveness for these barrier methods, we wanna think 80 to about 85% effectiveness. And that's why I say, I think about these really more in terms of preventing sexually transmitted infections versus preventing pregnancy. Because that means that 15 to 20 out of 100 people who are using barrier methods for birth control are gonna get pregnant. So that's a little high for me, especially when we consider some of the other methods that we've talked about are only like, you know, one to two out of a hundred people. So that's, you know, quite high. But if that's your thing, hey, do you. It's, it's all good. I always say the best birth control is the one that you will use and the one that works for you. So if that's your thing, you know, if you're using barrier methods, I also recommend that you uh, use the pullout method too. And we'll talk about that a little bit next week when we talk about natural family planning. So, um, you know, you might want to throw in a little pullout method too along with that because that works quite well uh, if you're using barrier methods. But you know, in terms of pros and cons, obviously one of the pros is not having hormones um, that you're using. And so that can be really helpful for some folks who don't tolerate hormones well. Um, you don't have to use a medication um, regularly with barrier methods. You only need barrier methods when you're actually sexually active. So it doesn't require you to take a medication all the time. And of course, the con, the big con is that it does not, you know, work uh, as effectively as many of the other methods. So you're looking at that 15 to 20 people out of 100, you know, one of those 15 to 20 might be you. 
Oh, and let me back up. One of the big pros is it also protects against sexually transmitted infections, which is one of the things that most of the other methods do not do. So we talked about how some of the other methods might offer a little bit of protection by like thickening the cervical mucus and keeping infections from getting up into um, the uterus and out into the fallopian tubes, but they really don't offer much protection otherwise from sexually transmitted infections. So that's a definite big pro is protection against Against sexually transmitted infections. So um, my bad, didn't want to miss that one. Okay, so these are our barrier methods. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Support your girl, right? Um, let me know in the comment section which one of these birth controls so far seems really good for you. Let me know about your favorite condom choices and if you've ever tried female condoms or dental dams or cervical cups or diaphragms. I'd love to know about it. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a single Well Woman Wednesday episode. And I will catch you next Wednesday, girl gang. Peace.